it's very exciting to have remembered to hit record. I don't always, and that's always terrible. All right, so uh, welcome to Using Your iPad and Apple Pencil for Teaching and More. Uh, my name is John Jones. I'm director of the Media Resources Center. I'm also the MRC's, or really one of the MRC's, uh, resident gadget nerds, uh, which is why I got into doing this. Um, I'm going to be showing you uh, some tricks and uh, how some of the new functionality for the Apple Pencil and Scribble on the iPad make it possible to have a very pen-like experience and still be doing it in a very digital way. Um, I, uh, I, I'm a, a writer, uh, fiction writer by education and stuff like that. Um, I spent a lot of my years going through college and grad school and stuff like that. I'm still a, a journal writer by uh, practice. And uh, I do a lot of my best thinking longhand. And so that need to transition to text a lot of the time can be very frustrating. This is the first time there's been a product that really in a relatively reasonable way, and I say relatively, uh, and you'll see why in a couple of minutes, but um, it makes the transition to uh, between the two a lot more seamless. So um, what I'm using for the demonstration today, this is my um, uh, Apple iPad Air. Uh, it's the New Year's model, um, which works with the Apple Pencil 2. Um, the Apple Pencil 2, um, the, the original Apple Pencil, which I used for a, a while with my previous iPad, is the one that has the uh, jack for plugging it into the iPad at the very tip, and you have the little clip on the end. Yeah, like that one. And it plugs in in a really awkward, please don't walk by while it's plugged in way. This one... Um, attaches to the iPad magnetically at the top. You know what I'm going to do is turn off my background so that it's easier for you guys. To, I don't lose things in the wrong backgrounds or lose things that way. So here you'll see this just clicks on. Um, it's not enough to consistently hold it on my iPad when I shove it into my backpack. Um, but uh, it's certainly plenty good for carrying it around the house and that sort of thing. Um, and that's also where it charges and how it pairs. So that makes it really, really easy to use. Um, so those are the two models. Um, hey, I didn't finish writing this slide. Um, it works with the most recent iPad Air and also with the iPad Pro. Um, if you managed to get one of those, um, the iPad Air price point is a lot more reasonable, and it's pretty much great functionality. There isn't too much that you lose in comparison to the iPad Pro. Um, and for what we're doing, though, either pencil will work, and the, the original Apple Pencil will work with uh, some of the older iPads and stuff like that, so pretty much any of the more modern ones. So it's it's pretty good and pretty easy. Um I'm going to, I only have a couple of slides for this just to give me a little bit of structure. Mostly what we're going to do is I'm going to be demoing things on uh, the iPad. Um, there's a new functionality called Scribble that isn't really an app. It's part of the iOS system. And it allows us to write in just about any text field. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm pulling my iPad down off my, I have a, a keyboard thing that I use a lot of the time and that has its own advantages but um, looking for that's what I dropped all right so um, I'm here on my landing screen I'm going to go into notes quickly just to show you some some basics with the handwriting normally I would be able to just type or bring up my keyboard here but I'm going to go into a brand new note here. I've got the keyboard you'll see pops up. I can make the keyboard go away and then I can just write. Um, and this is when I'm using, you'll see the, the pen down here at the very bottom, the little tray of tools. If I switch over to the black pen or maybe the blue pen to stand out a bit more and I can change that to maybe red, um, this won't 
translate to text. It's only this very first tool, the, the pen with the A on it that will. And it doesn't need to change color because it's gonna be whatever color text I'm doing right at the moment. When I make a mistake, I can just scribble it out. I'm leaving the cursor right there. And it'll just insert that word right there. If I want to see, I'm writing down here in the page, but it's supposed to be putting that where I uh, was writing it. Let me put the cursor back up there. So this allows me to write longhand, create text. It's not as fast as typing, but for me, it's more satisfying than typing and it feels more connected to the way my brain works than typing. Um, this particular app has uh, some scribbling and stuff like that, that I can, or I can erase things like that. Um, I'm actually a fan of a couple of other apps for handwriting. Um, one of them that I use quite a bit is called Nebo. This is a uh, app that you have to pay for, although it costs only about like five or six bucks, I think. So most of these are really inexpensive. Um, and in this one, I can write longhand. We have somebody in the waiting room. Um, and you'll see that it changes. You may not be able to see it very well, but above the I write longhand, there's the text that I'm writing has shown up there. If I just decide I don't want something, I can scribble it out. Um, hey, now this is where you run into a big problem if you're me. Um, I have um, really abysmal handwriting. And so my handwriting gets me into trouble. If you have very neat handwriting, you'll do very well. Um, so I made that, I can write longhand. And in this particular app in Neva, if I want that to translate officially, it's giving me a preview up here, which is that little bit. I can uh, convert it officially to text. Now I noticed that I ended up with a capital S on still. I can scribble that out. Um, and it's not quite as good as the, the notes one was for inserting something. Um, it's doing something. All right, well, that's becoming very weird. I must've done something. Um, what I like about this, and I'll bring up some other big blocks of text that I have. Um, here's some meeting notes I took in a meeting. Um, this, these notes are all handwritten. Written. I can go in and just tap on a chunk and turn it into text and then go through and correct it. Um, I want to undo that because it's not close enough. I may have to go back in and fix some handwriting, but this allows me to do a lot of handwriting and uh, work in that way. Um, in some cases, that may be a little bit too restrictive and you may want to use something else. Um, I like, no, I don't need a new notebook. I just need a sample. Uh, this one is called Penultimate. It's uh, a product from Evernote, which is a company that does a lot of note-taking apps. It gives me a lot of different choices for the type of template I want to be writing on. So I can do monthly planners and stuff like that. Um, if I decide I want graph paper, I can then draw on that here. Um, I can also create a detailed area. And then you'll see down here at the bottom of my screen, I have what I've already drawn and I can draw on it with much finer control. Um, this particular one gives me something that feels a bit like a typewriter. 
Um, it's it's meant for writing longhand, and I can, uh, if I'm writing longhand, this is me writing. It's very terrible, but then I can just go down to the next line and do some more, go down to the next line and more, blah, blah, blah. Um, the disadvantage of penultimate is it does not do the translation. So it's not going to uh, turn that into text at any point. But in some cases, depending upon what I'm doing, handwriting is better than text because I don't have to worry about whether it's going to translate accurately. But most apps that are on here will work with Scribble, even if they weren't designed to that. So Bear Notes is a note-taking uh, app. Um, and so this is a practice one I was doing a little bit earlier. I can go in here and um, I can just, and again, I've made a mistake. Uh, go back and fix it. Um, and it's just converting that to text on the fly. Um, if you're somebody, I also am a fan of index cards. And this app, which is called CardFlow, it's down here at the bottom, um, lets me create uh, index cards and organize them. So here's a card. And I can write on my card. Uh, and then organize the cards and the, the sheet and stuff like that. Um, uh, I can also switch this over and do text. So this is going to That should become text. I think I didn't pick it. There we go. So again, a lot of these apps are uh, doing that for us. So, and then there's plenty of drawing apps and stuff like that. Um, if you just wanna be able to draw, um, I have, one called Flow, gives me a lot of different pens. If I want to just be able to, you know, solve a math problem. Again, this is just pure whiteboard style stuff. So it'll make a little database and it's gonna send things to another database. And um, the output will be more databases that are then hacked and sent to some place uh, like the Internet Archive, and then everybody goes to jail. Anyway, um, so that's essentially just about as easy. I can be doing this, sharing this the way I am. If you were doing this in a Zoom session or something like that, you could do that for teaching very easily. But um, let's go back to our PowerPoint. And it's interesting to me, especially as I share it here, um, the, uh, the window changes. If I turn my iPad up, it changes like that. If I turn it like this, so being aware of what you're doing that way is also useful. Um, I've talked about many of these. Um, I'm a big fan, as I said, of, of Nebo, but just the Notes app will do text uh, translation for you in a really easy to use way. Um, I have used and regularly used the pencil to do things like uh, write. You get if you're in Messenger or the chat app, and you get those that little window at the bottom where you would normally be typing typing your chat in. You can just text right in that space as well. So that's uh, just as useful and and really exciting to be able to handwrite a chat back to somebody. But the real reason we're here is to talk about Blackboard. So let's play with that. Um, using tablets and Blackboard, um, we went, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the tablet view and tables and scrolling, and then we will actually play around with some grading. 
I'm going to go into Safari and let's go ahead and make sure I'm still logged in. Hooray. Um, all right. Not what I meant to do. All right. So I'm going to go to my courses. Oh, and actually I bookmarked my class, so it would be easy to find. So um, the first thing that I need to draw your attention to if you're using a tablet, this will happen sometimes on a Surface even, but any sort of tablet when you're in Blackboard, you may be uh, frustrated because that left-hand menu is going away. Um, and all I need to do is tap in that area and it'll open back up and you'll see that little gray arrow that points towards the left. I can tap anywhere really in this space between the two things to open it back up. But that opens and closes that menu. And what it's doing is helping me with screen real estate. Uh, but that may be, uh, may be confusing for first time folks. Um, and again, I'm in Safari. Safari is connected to the iOS stuff. It's gonna be able to use Scribble. Let's go ahead and create a new announcement. Just going into this text field with my pen. And you'll see that it's just converting that text for me. So I really, oh, Wally, hooray. <laughs> Go ahead and fix that. Make sure it's really. And you'll notice when I wrote my really, I wrote it with a capital R. And Siri is actually smarter than me and fixed it and made it a lowercase r. So I'll hit submit and send that in. So there's my new message. So I can do any of that sort of stuff in here that I would normally be typing in. I can be doing longhand. Um, it's the same functionality will work for students too, but that's not quite so important. Um, I, what I did for this was copy in uh, one of my science fiction classes. So I have a lot of course materials in here in case we wanted to play with stuff um, or some anyway, uh, oh, that's all down here lower. But right here, I created a couple of essay assignments so we can play around with grading. So I'm gonna go down here to the grade center and go into needs grading. And you'll see I have a couple of these. The first thing I did was go in and do a uh, discussion forum post, forum post. I use uh, rubrics for my grading in the discussion forums. So let me go grade all users and I'll show you how this works. So I did this with, with my student preview account. Um, here, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room here. Um, so, there is my student's post. Um, I have a feedback to learn a thing, but I'm gonna go into my rubric and just check those boxes. Uh, I don't wanna give them no points. Let's give them good points. And once I'm done, I'm using my finger to scroll. Um, although in this case, the pen would work in some apps it knows the difference between the pencil and your finger and you can use the, your fingers to scroll and the pencil to write. So that functionality can be really nice. Uh, and then I'll save my rubric and then let's go ahead and try and handwrite some notes. What do you know? I can just write in that field. So there, he's got his grade and I did it longhand sitting on the couch. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at an essay assignment. In this case, I'm in Box. The, this app here, this plugin for Blackboard is called Box, and it's our uh, uh, grading app within here. Um, I also have a rubric here and feedback. I thought I had the rubric set up in here. It looks like I don't. Um, at any rate, I can go in here, check on one of these tools if I want to use the pen, and I can start writing. 
let's say I want to change the color because people should Um, so I'm using two fingers here to zoom in and out. And I may have to go off the pen to scroll. So I tip off the pen and then I can say, okay, this part wasn't too bad. Uh, this is terrible, blah, blah, blah. Any of the sorts of pencil markings I might do on a student's paper. Go off the pen, scroll down to the next bit turn on the pen. Um, there are other tools in here, obviously. Um, if I wanna do a little detail thing I wanna do there and here, So that's that. I think there's a submit button there. Um, print, download, uh, all these other options here. Um, but this gives me plenty of flexibility for grading something that a student turned in. Um, I can, if I want it to feel a little bit more like I have the whole screen, I can turn it up this way and give myself the sidebar and even do this. So I can actually use most of my screen to do my marking up. And we'll go ahead and change colors again to something more festive. La, 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 la. And then having done all that, I can go back to landscape, bring back the grading panel in here. And if I had the rubric set up in here, I could use that. I can give them 75 points. You did okay. And then hit submit. It's also possible if I really wanted more tools. So this is the, another sample that I set up. It's actually the same essay. In this case, I do have the rubric set up. And so again, I have my point system I can use to be doing my grading. Uh, so I've given the student a grade. I can adjust that grade. And uh, I can also, if I want to, download the essay. And if I have another app that I want to do some editing with it, I can uh, edit it in that app. Um, but in most cases, I can do most of what I'll want to do just writing here on this particular essay. So, Uh, what other things would you like to be able to do? I've been just sort of showing you what I've figured out so far. Um, a lot of the, the, the handwriting in the box area and being able to write on uh, the papers like this is largely true with any stylus and any sort of tablet view that's letting you use the stylus. Um, you can also do that although it's a lot harder to do with your mouse and in the regular browser. But handwriting into these feedback fields is relatively new and something I don't know that there's an equivalent of outside of the iOS environment. And again, Uh, so 
I've just been rambling. Um, do you guys have questions or thoughts or reactions? All right, John, what did you do to get it to delete or did you just scribble those out? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a matter of scribbling. Mind so, blown. Yeah, it's it's so intuitive, it's, it's scary. Um, so yeah, I'll go back to announcements where I can create content. Um, we'll create a new one. Uh, so I'm, I've just said test this there. Um, and if I want to, I just scribbled out the this and I'll just write in pencil. And it turns that into pencil. In the bigger text area, I have more room to write and it still knows that I'm in that area. So I have a little bit more flexibility. It's gonna put whatever I'm writing in on top of the, uh, where, where the cursor is by and large. So um, and I can copy all that. I just three taps to copy everything in there. Copy, and then I put it at the end. And no, nope. let's see, I'm gonna paste. I'll use the paste button, that'll make it easy just to make a lot of text. Um, and then You see how it's grabbing my handwriting and drop it in here at the end. Um, and if I want to take out something in the middle there, now my cursor is right there. So and my underline didn't work very well. And I spelled cursor wrong. But other than that, it's working great. And if I want it bold, I just select it that way, underline, that sort of thing. There will be some little problems. Let's say that it keeps translating a, a complicated word that um, the dictionary doesn't recognize. All I have to do is touch that little keyboard there and it'll bring up a little keyboard for me uh, to pop up to spell something out manually. some cases, it's just easier to do that than it is uh, the other stuff. And this gives me a quick undo. If I did something wrong, I can put in a return there. There's some other settings that I can play with here. Now, this here is uh, showing us that uh, the uh, that one of the, the features I didn't tell you about on the uh, the Apple Pencil 2 is um, the, uh, the, that it has one flat side, which is the side that connects magnetically to the iPad. Um, if you tap on that right up here close to the tip, it'll change the tool to the eraser or to another tool. And that's gonna be easiest to show you here in notes. Um, So this is writing text, but I can just tap it. And now it's switched tool to the eraser. And I'm erasing this gunk that I did earlier. Go back to text. So sometimes you see up here at the top, it's indicating which tool I'm using as I switch it back and forth. Um, sometimes that's easier than going to find the menu. Um, I have, I, Personally, I'm not getting used to the tapping very well. So uh, I'm just sort of old dog, new tricks sort of thing. But, uh, and I find that I more often than not accidentally tap it.
What else can I show you? Or can we experiment with? Can you go back and redo the grading of the um, discussion board? I didn't quite catch, that was kind of fast. Sure, what I'll have to do, and that might as well be a good demo is I'll have to create a new one. Um, so I'll go into my student preview. I'm gonna to go to discussions and go down to my introduction one. And create a thread. So again, I'm just gonna use the pencil in the, the subject field. Whoops, that got screwed up. All right, so I've created an entry. Um, I need to submit it and then exit my preview and keep the student data so that it'll still be there. And now I can go down to needs grading and I should have that to grade. So I'll go in and grade all my users on that. So uh, I'm seeing it's, it's the same student user, the same preview user. So I'm seeing all of his contributions, but, um, and it's grading all as part of the same thing. But if I go into the discussion rubric here um, and I can pop that out if it's helpful um, the different levels of the, the rubric that I've set up. Your rubrics are uh, completely customizable. We do some separate training on rubrics if that's useful to you. But in this case, I just do the, uh, the scoring on this. Let's say I wanna change a couple of those. I'll save my rubric. And then I have my comments field on the side here. And again, I can just hand and write <laughs> so I got my cursor in the wrong place there uh, but but you were saying that you can seamlessly kind of go back and forth between the pencil and yeah so let's for, for fixing something quick like that right right so down here in the bottom tray i have this little lozenge in the bottom i have an undo button that'll let me just undo a bunch of things then i have this keyboard that i can bring up that brings up essentially what looks like the iphone keyboard um and uh, I'll try and fix that by going back here, deleting it all. Um, and then make that go away and come back in here and It is not liking that. So not sure what I did there to mess that up in that one moment, but I can just keep going. using either one. 
and you'll notice, um, you know, if you do two spaces in a row, it'll automatically drop in a period, which is what I did at the end of keyboard there. For pencil, I have to put the period in. So there I put the period in. I go back here. And two taps. I find it um, personally, uh, I'm not as fast handwriting as I am typing. Um, but we spend so much time sitting at our desks these days, especially as we're dealing with the COVID stuff and doing all of our Zoom teaching and stuff like that, to be able to take my grading to the couch or to uh, a more comfortable chair or some other environment and be able to work this way allows me to mix up my, my working situations in a much more satisfying way. What else can I tell you? So I have another question. So like, I, I'm thinking about, yeah, how to integrate this in, and I'm thinking about how you're doing it right now in our training. So you signed in as your iPad and you, and then like, you're sharing your screen some way. Can you mm -hmm. talk about like what the process of doing that? Oh, yeah, sure. One way I was thinking about doing it would be like, if you, you know, had a group discussion and I mean, with in usually in chat, you know, they can put stuff in, but if you wanted people just to shout things out, then you could be writing it like you would on a board. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Maybe that's old right. School. Right. Right. No. So I I'm just using, um, I'm in, zoom on my macbook pro and so that's the camera that i'm looking at and and uh is the primary host for the session and then i went to zoom on my ipad and got into the same session here i just used the session number to log in and so now i'm in both um and because both accounts have rights i'm able to share my screen from the ipad so i'm sharing the ipad screen and using the the webcam and the microphone and stuff like that on my desktop. Um, it was important on the iPad to not join the audio for the meeting or else I would get feedback. So I just made the choice to connect by phone and then didn't pick a phone number. Um, so that lets me have both things going um, and I can, uh, I, I, it's, a lot more useful to be able to do the presentation that way for this. But if we were in class, one of the things that I really like, um, Microsoft Office has this whiteboard tool, which will essentially work just like a whiteboard. And I've got obviously some junk I was experimenting with, but I can create a new one. Um, and I can uh, post this to Teams if I'm using Teams. Um, I think we could have multiple users in that environment if we wanted to. I could invite someone so I can send it to them to ask them to come in here and share this with me. And then we can all write on the right board. Um, this wouldn't do the text to uh, the handwriting to text for me, but it would give me a place to just draw if we're solving a problem, if we're doing, you know, chemical bonds and stuff like that. I can do all of those sorts of things here. An important trick if I'm using this for instruction, of course, like anything else is I have to worry about accessibility. So, um, make sure that uh, if I'm drawing something on this, so I'm gonna draw a box and then I'm gonna buy a triangle and then I'm gonna draw a star. Uh, believe it or not, that's a star. We'll try it again. Um, yeah, that looks more like a star. Um, I need to be verbally describing what I'm drawing while I'm drawing it so that somebody who can't see it knows what's going on on the screen. And that's true in face-to-face -face and in, in this sort of environment as well.
I do find uh, just as a point here that the uh, scribble functionality doesn't work very well for me in any of the Microsoft products on the iPad. So I was not able to say if I go into Microsoft Word and just start a blank document here, I can draw because it'll give me the drawing options. And again, I could use this as a sort of whiteboard with my classes, but it's not gonna, even if that were text, it wouldn't convert it to text. If you're somebody like me who also spends a lot of time uh, at the keyboard and, and, you know, giving yourself a lot of repetitive motion challenge that way as well, switching to the pen for some of your work may actually be useful as well. Any other th things you'd like to see how to do or try doing? Coming up on the end here, um, give you guys a couple more minutes to think about what else we might screw up with this or, or see if we can't break. Can I ask you just a quick question about, um, about the browser? I, I read not long ago that Firefox actually works better than um, Safari. And in fact, I, I've had trouble with Safari and Blackboard, um, so I'm working mostly on a PC now with with my grades, uh, and and maybe it's just a problem with my particular Mac, which is is now several years old. Um, have you ever had trouble? Do you do you notice a difference between Safari and Firefox? Um, you know, I I use on my iPad. I tend to use Safari the most. And I, I use a MacBook Pro and I'm always on Chrome or Firefox in my MacBook Pro. I think that they, I mean, they, they are two different operating systems. So if, if you've heard that there are problems in Safari uh, in the Mac OS, um, I would, that wouldn't necessarily apply to the iOS. Um, I, I believe I do have Firefox on here somewhere as well, or at least Chrome. Thought I did anyway. Hell, I even have Edge. Um, but um, I haven't noticed problems myself, but I know that we are constantly seeing browser-based issues that crop up and go away, um, you know, one day or the next as they do their incremental updates on uh, their browsers and uh, create new challenges for everybody. So... Um, it's just one of those moving targets that's always going to be a moving target. But um, a lot of the time, switching browsers, if, you, if you're having a problem, is the first sort of troubleshooting step, even before, you know, did you turn it off and turn it back on again, uh, sorts of, of typical tech responses to things. But I don't, in, in this environment working this way, I don't have problems in Safari. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Hey, John, I have a question. Is there any difference between the pencil one and pencil two for functionality? I mean, obviously the magnetic, but can I do most everything you, you showed today with my old oh, awkward the, the Apple pencil? I've shown you today, except for the, the changing functionality with the yeah. tap. That's the one thing that I, I think that the, that the Apple pencil do, two does that your pencil won't. But everything else, all of the handwriting and stuff like that should all work They're pretty much exactly the same. Thanks. Yep. Here's Chrome. I knew I had it. Uh, so let's go. <laughs> this will be easier on my keyboard. I don't know why it went dark all of a sudden because I hit the button. Is it gonna come back? I may have just ended my presentation early.
All right, I'm coming back. So let me go back to Chrome and Right, nope. The new long passwords are really aggravating. And then going to my courses. So it seems to work here too. Um, that's obviously a really superficial test, but it's doing the job. All right. Well, um, thanks everyone for being here and for coming to the training. Um, if, uh, the uh, if you, if you have uh, colleagues who would be interested in this, there's going to be a recording ver recorded version of it up uh, probably in about 24 hours. Um, and uh, I hope you guys are having a good ARC and a good good beginning of the year. So thanks very much, everyone. Thank you. This was great. Good. Thanks, John. Really appreciate it. Yep. Bye bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.